So welcome to a syndicate talks. And of course, we're here to talk with Ben Arledge and about three tech tools. And by tech tools, we're talking about applications, how they affect operations, and ultimately about your business going online. So apps, ops, and online businesses and how technology, much like we're doing right now, has an impact and the ability to, to leverage, grow, sustain, help, support a business. In fact, for the bulk of, uh, you know, everybody on this call right now is a member of Syndicate Tribe. So hello to the tribe sitting in the room. And for those that are going to watch this webinar in the coming days and weeks and months, this application, you know, and this may even be a topic, a topic of conversation for us today, has helped to allow our organization to continue to meet, talk to each other, foster business development and growth. So knowing what to do with technology, how to make it work, and more importantly, where to invest your time and your hard-earned dollars is going to make sure to maximize technology's use for you. So three tech, you're going, okay, you're just gonna give me three things. Actually, we're gonna talk about app, apps or applications. We're gonna talk about how it supports operations for business. And then of course, online, what it means when your business goes online. A lot of people just think that maybe it's this thing, you know, there's my phone, a set of headphones, it's on a tripod. Is that, a, that's going online. I opened up the internet window and I did the thing and it, it made the places and I went to the, went to my bank and et cetera. And occasionally I talk to my marketing guy and he says the pretty pictures are doing well. Uh, there's a little more to it than that. So we hope to, to illuminate, shine a flashlight, some dark corners and, and leave you better educated at the end of it. Ben Arledge is with me. Now, Ben and I have had a relationship stemming, stemming back and stretching back just about two years. And Ben is one of the foremost thought leaders inside of technology in Western Canada. In fact, he's worked for some major players. He's worked on some fundamentally scalable, large size applications, software processes. And of course, his technical expertise and mastery is, is hard to come by. His role primarily is done as, as chief technical officer and of course, chief of his own little empire through companies like Avenue IO. Click story, cabana.io, which is the latest and greatest for social media marketing management for solopreneurs on the marketplace. Cloud Owl is uh, his real estate company, Ironbrook, 5050 raffle app, etc. These are the things that, that Ben is building, working with, creating, sustaining, and of course, he's building the technical back end for Syndicate. So, Syndicate can be really a, 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 an efficient and a, and a world class uh, business with very little input, very little effort. Small, small local environment and economy, world-class impact. So Ben, welcome. Why don't you take about 30 seconds or a minute, fill us in a little more on your background, and then why don't we dive right into apps, ops, and online, and how technology is going to help businesses. Sure, thank you much. Um, ben Arledge here. Uh, I've been uh, in IT for about, uh, well, over 20 years now, so a long time. Um, through the dot-com bubble in 2000 before that. So um, I've seen a lot of things in the public and private sectors um, that, uh, that I've been able, I've been fortunate to be able to not only work through on small and large scale um, on a technical side, but also on a business process and uh, advisement um, as well. So. So that's, that's where I specialize right now. I, I help companies figure out where they're, where they're at um, and work with them to where they wanna be. Um, and that can be through apps, that can be through uh, efficiencies in their business as well. Yeah. Perfect, Ben. Thanks for sharing a little bit about yourself. Let's get right into the meat and potatoes to start with. We've got apps, applications, you know, software, you know, for those of us that are getting a little older, we remember software, right? You know, it's still, I got a floppy disk. I got to put it into the, the giant drive folder and it's going to make a whole bunch of noise and it's going to take a little while. And eventually I'm going to start typing in DOS to where we've moved forward to now. So we've got applications, we've got operations and we've got online. And it's, more importantly, it's questions about applications, things like kind of apps that business owners should be using, uh, kind of apps that make differences to small businesses, uh, what apps are most essential for businesses, et cetera. The kinds of the things that, that people ask, want to know information on, and I mean, through course of conversations over essentially two years, this is a number of the things that we've had a chance to talk about. So let's go to what kind of apps should an average business use? You know, uh, email, accounting, sales, et cetera. What would be some of your recommendations and suggestions? 
and some thought or feedback on that? Yeah. Um, so there's, I mean, there's so many options on the market right now um, and, and choices, which is great for small businesses. Um, but the problem is, is figuring out which one is the right one for you. Um, and that can take time, which a lot of us don't have. Um, so for things like email, um, for me, that's, that's a really easy one to recommend. Um, I usually go with a Google or Microsoft uh, 365 um, account. Um, they know the email game really, really well. Um, they've been in, in that industry a long time and it's, email is kind of like a cartel. Um, you don't want to cheap out on that. Um, you want to do it the right way because the big players have a good grip on uh, keeping spammers out, keeping fraud out of their systems. So um, you definitely want to um, go with the big players there. Uh, for accounting, uh, lots of options. QuickBooks, you know, Wave has a free option as well. Um, uh, for those just starting out, that can be that can be hugely valuable there uh, to get a, an idea of, of where, where you're at with forecasting. Sales, uh, you're looking at having a PayPal account or Stripe account, um, or even Braintree if you've got an integrated system. Braintree is bought by PayPal actually, um, so that's under the same roof now. So uh, if I could, can I jump in for a sec? Yeah. Interesting you say that because we actually had our we had our accounting partner in to talk about uh, financial structure for businesses and when asked directly about software, once more we see QuickBooks and Wave come up. And of course we're talking about sales, you really mean payment, payment processing. In other words, how do I get paid faster? You know, people yeah. are gonna wave their wallet around, they're gonna wanna, you know, whip out their credit card, whatever it is. Some people still write checks. So that's just I mean, that would be speeding up the amount of time it takes to get paid. Right. Yeah. Uh, typically, you're going to add PayPal or your Stripe, connect them with whatever accounting software you're using or with your website. So you've got WordPress or something like that. So you would need some sort of way to accept payment there. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and speaking of websites, you know, you look, there's so many options there as well. You could go with WordPress again, so many different plugins. Um, the only thing I would caution them small businesses there is it can be a bit of a time sink. Um, there's a lot of updates on a daily or weekly basis to WordPress. Um, their WordPress sites are the most hackable. So you could end up having some downtime, which could negatively, negatively affect your business as well. So some things to consider there. Um, ways of gotten around that is through static websites. Um, so this is a not a, a non content management system. It's basically a static brochure website. Um, maybe it's got a contact page or or a button that goes to PayPal to purchase. But for the most part, it's just static uh, and it's not hackable. It will take a little bit more time to update um, because it is not a content management system. Um, but if you don't make a whole lot of updates to your website, if it's mostly the same content um, and you have minimal updates, I would highly recommend considering that. Uh, but then you can go into very complex systems which are cloud-based as well. So you can have you know, tens or dozens of servers which manage your business um, in different capacities. So. Uh, marketing side, you're looking at having a social media management tool. Um, you can, so you could check out Cabana. Uh, there's other ones like Hootsuite as well, which will help you kind of schedule your, um, your content. Uh, you can plan that out in advance for the next week, month, um, whatever you've got the capacity for. Uh, and then you can also use some tools like Canva, uh, or creating those content on different platforms. Um, and you can use Unsplash as well. That's, a, that's one I use quite a bit uh, for finding good images. Um, because when, you, when you're on social media or, or marketing, you, you're, you're looking for those visual elements and, and that's what you can get through that. Uh, advertising, you're looking at Facebook business as well as LinkedIn as your primary uh, on a business side. Uh, those are your largest audiences there. So if I if I can for a moment, I'm gonna I'm gonna screen share something real quick. 
because sure. you mentioned some of the software we've got here. And mm -hmm. I want to just show off a little bit here because I, it's one of the tools that, that I use uh, semi-regularly. My content goes out in a number of different places. But it, I think it's I think it's important to, to just share it for a moment and say, hey, this is this is kind of the stuff that we do. This is this is the the inside of Cabana. We're looking right at right at our dashboard for for Cabana, and this is the published side as well. And I mean, you mentioned the software; that's the stuff I'm using. You know, mm -hmm. everything you talked about. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on the spot for a moment because it gave us a little list. So call it our shopping list, if you will. But I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the expert. I'm gonna ask the tech person. I like Cabana. I was introduced to Cabana thanks to you. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything else you've mentioned so far is stuff that I've used in the past. You know, when it comes to my marketing side, I use Cabana because that helps to schedule. I use Canva because that helps me to create stuff. You know, create pretty pictures, marketing content, etc. Yeah. So these are these are the call it the Kool Aid that I'm drinking myself. What does Ben use? So we're we're here and we got our we got our master list, if you will. Mm -hmm. What do you use for email? Yeah, I use Cabana. Um, I've, I've developed that in-house here, so um, we I recommend that for for our internal operations as well as you know uh, those of you in, in syndicate and those operating small businesses. Um, it's I set it at a pretty low price point, uh, mostly because I'm not looking to. Um, get the large organizations necessarily using that. I'm looking for small businesses and help them out. Okay. Yeah. Ben, what do you use for email? What do you use for your accounting? Yeah, what do okay. you use for payment processing? What are, what, what's the stuff sure. that Ben uses? Sure. Um, I, I love Google. Uh, I'm a little bit biased that way. So I use the Google G Suite for email. Um, uh, my accounting, I've, I've used FreshBooks. Um, for a while now, uh, I'm not married to it. Um, I've considered jumping over to QuickBooks, but um, for now, uh, I've, I've stayed there. Um, for sales, I use PayPal and Stripe, uh, depending on uh, the business and the product that I'm that I'm offering. We've got a few different businesses, so I do use both. Um, for websites, I use. Uh, static sites, as well as um, a combination of client and server-based technologies for that. So, uh, being a being a tech guy, I, I've got a few few tools under my belt there. So, fair enough. We got marketing. We talked a little bit about that, and of course, I I'm going to help to fill in the blanks too because yeah. it is overwhelming to take this thing and get it to talk for your business. Mm -hmm. Something like marketing can already seem scary as it is. Having something that helps to speed that up, having something that helps to create the content. Talking about payment, you know, some people are going, ah, I'll take check, I'll take cash, you're going to set a payment. I don't know whether to go through one of the payment processing systems out there, et cetera. These things can be exhausting. So having just a list here, use this for this reason, use this for that is, is something that, that really starts to narrow it down. I mean, with marketing goes advertising. So how do you as a small business owner advertise and what do you advocate? Uh, you know what? I'm I've been actually pretty terrible at advertising. Um, that's why I have you, Mitch. Um, so uh, Facebook uh, ads. Um, I've done some LinkedIn as well, Google AdWords as well. Um, uh, that's the gist of what I've I've done. Um, but really, I think I think I think we we could all probably get more value um, out of doing our own advertisements through our own social channels. Mm -hmm. so if you're on, say, Cabana, and you're, you're creating content through Canva, um, yeah, I think that's, that's probably a really great bang for your buck as a small business, is just pushing it out through your channels, sharing it. Fantastic, okay. So with that, uh, differences. We've talked about advertising, marketing, et cetera. That consumer-facing side, like what, are, what is gonna make a big difference to businesses? when it comes to pointing it out at the marketplace? Mm -hmm. And then what should people really look at actually investing money in? In other words, oh, great, you mentioned some stuff. I'm sure some of it costs, some of it doesn't. I know that I can sign up for a, G, for a you know, through Google Gmail for a free email, but you mm -hmm. mentioned G Suite. So yeah. where do we spend our money? What do we do to, to point ourselves out to the marketplace a little more and where do we save? Sure. 
uh, for email. I mean, it's pretty low cost. Um, I would highly recommend, you know, doing G Suite or Office 365. Uh, they're pretty low cost, like five to ten dollars a month um, for email. So, uh, to me, that's a no-brainer because I know what is involved in managing an email server, and yeah, it's a nightmare. So, um, for all the things that these companies do, well worth the cost. Um, you know, marketing. Uh, if you're using a social media management tool. Um, it's going to be tough to find a cheap one that's good. Uh, you're going to have to spend probably a little bit of cash there for that, um, that functionality, but that's going to pay off in spades in your time. Okay. Um, so well worth it there. Uh, you're also going to want to look at analytics tools. So you could look at uh, Google Analytics, which is a free tool. Um, but it's a bit more technically challenging. So unless you're um, in the analytics space every day, uh, it might be a little bit overwhelming. Um, and you might not have the dashboards, uh, which can be customized to give you the right metrics. Um, so we've got ClickStory, which is a product that I've, that I've also built, um, which kind of gives you some basic stats as well as um, and this is what it, it offers a couple things that Google Analytics doesn't. Um, and that's live sessions and heat maps for your website. So uh, it gives, gives you a little bit of insight into what your audience is doing on your website um, with just a, a straight up video. You can watch what they're doing, what they're clicking on, what they're looking at, uh, which is highly useful when figuring out what your customer is interested in and where they're getting stuck. I'm going to flip over to screen share for a moment to do just that. Here is, here's click story. It's actually looking at, at my website right now. And this data is just for a, just for a handful of days. You can see where people have come in and where they're actively looking, uh, wh how they're getting to me, uh, what countries they're coming from <laughs> screen resolution. <laughs> so, yeah, that could tell you what kind of image quality you would want on there. I mean, you know, Ben, you're mentioning something extraordinary about that, where they're coming to us from what kind of browsers, desktop, mobile, what kind of operating system people are coming in and, and cycling to look at my, look at my business. So analytics, let me just say this. Why is analytics so important then? You've mentioned it. Um, yeah. sh should I care? Do I really care about the math as long as people show up or, or why is analytics important? And I know that we've got some questions already. So, Let's answer the analytics question and then let's go to questions right now. Okay. Uh, analytics, uh, what's, what's so important about analytics? Uh, it's gonna tell you where, I mean, what, what your customers are doing, uh, what, what they're interested in, what, what pages on your site are performing. Uh, if they're not performing, you need to do some work on that. Um, if, if you find something that you didn't think would do or catch interest, um, you might be pleasantly surprised that you've got a piece of content there that's, that you need to um, make more prominent um, and milk that. So, yeah. Uh, Ashley, I know you've got a couple of questions right now. Great time to jump in. Perfect, thanks so much, Mitch. Um, so Ben, you had talked about, um, wave apps, you know, with regards to invoicing and things like that, but you also talked about PayPal with regards to payments. Would you recommend wave apps payments in like as, as a one function tool compared to getting a PayPal and getting, you know, wave apps to do invoicing and things, or is there, a, is there a benefit to having PayPal in addition? Uh, you can use their their payment systems. That should be fine. They're going to be pretty comparable to what PayPal or Stripe offer as far as transaction fees go, um, which are typically going to run about 2.9% plus 30 cents per transaction. Um, so most, most of the payment processors are about in that range, uh, if not exactly that. Um, it's, there's not a whole lot of variation there. Okay. So yeah, you can use Waves payment system. Okay, perfect. Um, it's what I'm using now, so I wanted to make sure whether I should switch or not. Um, and then with regards to your click story, I know you and I had talked earlier 
um, and that you were in the process of finalizing it and launching it. And I see that Mitch has got it and I'm not sure if he has a trial version or not. Is it available for public purchase now? Sorry, which one? Your click story? Yeah, um, so that one, we're actually gonna be adjusting some pricing on it okay. uh, on a lower end. Uh, so there's gonna be a, a cheaper option there available soon. Okay. Um, you know, if they get a chance to update it. That's okay. Um, and uh, we're looking at making a, a package available for syndicate members only as well. In the okay. So yeah, um, I'll share some links here shortly. Um, for you and the group and uh yeah perfect thank you awesome thanks ashley anybody uh, else questions one, one, for the note, yeah. one note on uh ashley's question about wave um if if you do say use paypal or stripes payment system and add that into into wave um you've got more ownership of the data that way so if you did say switch accounting systems it would still be going through your own stripe or paypal account mm. right uh, so you would still have all your data in that one spot rather than having to have two separate systems one for the old system and then switch over to a new system yeah that makes sense okay if i can with ben's thought real quick uh, i started in this industry seven years ago as a as a solo coach Got a business partner, spun a business up, ended up with eight employees, you know, 10 of us total in the company, came back out. And except for that period of time where my, where my partner and I had a far more developed business where we went down the, down the path of a, of a more formalized system, I've used PayPal nearly since the beginning of my, uh, my business industry. It allows people to pay with almost every payment method. Uh, the fees are comparable. Most people say, well, isn't it a little more expensive? Uh, you know, this will go more to the accountant talk we had a little while ago but I get to write that off as banking fees anyway. So I'm right. okay paying an extra quarter point or half a point every time I run a transaction because it's just going to come back in the form of a, a you know, a, a, a write down for my taxation later on because I'm paying banking fees because of it. So you'd want to be conscientious over costs. You always wish you always want to do, but you know, PayPal has certainly served my business uh, very well through you know, several hundred businesses and thousands of transactions. So without, right without failure and issue. So, you know, there's, there's some great alternatives there, low cost, no cost to, to working all the way up. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Ben, I just had one more question. You mentioned um, your Cabana program and I briefly just took a, took a peek at the website. I have a couple different brands as some of us do that we would be posting under, so different accounts. Yeah. Um, and I noticed that your, your middle offering does that. Is that, um, is that usually hidden in others? Like, for instance, Hootsuite, if we look at um, their offerings and they say, you know, 10 social media accounts, you know, is there fine print that says, but one per platform that we should be aware of? Um, yeah, most, most platforms will restrict you in that. They, of course, they want you to upgrade to a higher uh, plan, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But... Um, no, for, for Cabana, uh, you, uh, we're pretty generous on the amount of accounts you can add in. Uh, yeah. Those plans. So, um, you know, if you're looking for uh, a lot of Facebook accounts, say more than maybe you've got no Pinterest accounts or things like that, um, you can absolutely blow it up on, on Facebook instead. Okay. Yeah, maybe we can talk offline. Sure. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks. Awesome. All right, Ben, let's, let's drag you back in here to a moment. Apps, this is the stuff that everybody else has got. I can go to Google, I can go to Microsoft, uh, I can get your software, Cabana, to help social media management, something like Hootsuite, Analytics, I can get ClickStory to manage my website, I can go to Google Analytics to get data from there. Uh, I can go into, of course, you put ClickStory, Hotjar, all the social media platforms have their own analytics too, right? Facebook has got it for your company pages. LinkedIn has analytics based on, you know, how well your posts are doing individually, never mind whether you've got a company on there, et cetera. Uh, but there is stuff that you can pay for, stuff that you can get for free, and stuff that now some businesses, based on what they do, should really look at investing or even having made for themselves. Now, that's where you start to cross over from app to op. In other words, what's going to satisfy my business? You know, I know a couple of companies that are having custom project management software built, et cetera. So where should businesses start to make that consideration 
where should they look at investing in something more robust or even having their own stuff made? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and this is where, you know, my company cloud all really comes in and helping businesses understand where, where their challenges are at in their business uh, from a technology standpoint. Uh, so that could be from business workflow. Um, you know, maybe, maybe they're paying an arm and a leg through licensing of software, which, you know, if they put a little bit, little bit of investment into building their own internal product, um, that can save them long term and as well be more suitable for what their business actually needs. Um, and then you're looking at possibly doing brand building. You know, you're building that customized digital experience where uh, your customers are now coming through your customized product and um, they're, they're experiencing your brand, your, your, uh, your business flow. Uh, what else? I think, I think a lot of businesses also need to invest in apps where maybe they have, um, weaknesses in their business. So, uh, if, if you're short on, you know, the accounting side, yeah, you might go with, uh, with an app that's going to help you export that information to your accounting system or integrate it with it, right? Uh, you might have some internal processes that uh, will smooth that transition to um, an app that specializes in uh, an area where, you know, your business doesn't. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So for apps, uh, again, where you should invest, where you shouldn't invest, but think, think essential. Uh, most important, most essential. What are some of the considerations we have to make when we're looking at apps? Maybe not the kind of app, but what we should be looking for because I, we, we all know the device, right? The, the, the phone, the sacred, the sacred animal that we all carry around in our pockets or, or in our purses or in our, our shirts or in our jackets or wherever else we're going to do. Uh, there's an awful lot of stuff on there that's probably not so helpful, but certainly fun. Mm -hmm. So what should we do when we're making consideration about essential and what would be some of those characteristics that we should make, that we should use as our litmus test sure. to tell us whether or not we should use it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you're looking for, for apps that are going to not um, create more hassle for you or your employees. Um, they're going to not take up time. They're going to save you time um, so that you can spend time, more time on your business rather than in it, right? Uh, you want to help, you want to spend, um, or you want to, you want to have apps that are going to help you grow your business, um, not take up your time. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really the big one. Uh, I think when I, when I talk to so other people, I think that's, that's the primary one that uh, everything really revolves around is time. Time is money. So you want to make sure that you're using the right apps that will, that will make your, your business efficient. Okay. So when we will take that and let's take the next extension down there. If we're going to look at efficiency, we have to look at what happens when a business is operating. You know, we call it apps, ops, and, and online. So operations now what consideration should you make in the form of apps when it comes to automating? Uh, how would you make a consideration on, on making it work better for your business? Uh, what typical needs would you consider for streamlining the, your business or let's say uh, manufacturing, whether you build something or not to make the way you do stuff work better? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of what goes into an app is, is business logic. Um, and that's, that has to deal with, um, operating within your business parameters, whether that's restricting or throttling processes so that no single area gets overwhelmed or um, gets backed up. Uh, and that's from, from sales to shipping. You know, you can, you can have a sales department that's kicking ass, but if you don't have the bandwidth to, to deal with that, then, then you've got 
um, some things to figure out with your business logic there. Okay. Um, and you're looking at onboarding too. Onboarding your user experience, uh, your user interface. Um, I mean, let's be honest here. There's a lot of software out there that's clunky, uh, not very fun to use. Um, so, you know, making, making that app that's not going to be like stabbing you in the eyeballs is, is going to be um, a good thing. Uh, you, don't want, you don't want it to be annoying either. So things like notifications, um, a lot of apps will, will constantly bombard you. Um, you know, so you want to find the right balance for that. Uh, again, you're going to use analytics to determine what, what the right balance is. Um, and then sharing information. Um, you want to be able to have the information in your app or business uh, to be able to share it with the right people. So what, what does that transparency look like on different levels of management uh, versus employees uh, versus customers? Um, you want to make sure that you're You've got a degree of transparency there that's that's helping your business processes. Okay, yeah. so we're we're talking about processes and time, and I mean, we when we talked about efficiency, you wanted to save time. You've talked about it, uh, you know, it, how it's going to operate, how it's going to save us, how it's going to do all these other things. So what you're saying is that every piece of software I get, everything that I'm going to plug into this thing, is going to save time. Well, no, that's not because you've already said that. It's a number mm. of things that can really, really create time sinks. Yeah. So what do we have to consider when bringing software in? Because if it doesn't save time, make it better, make it more efficient, or make your employees better, probably not the best, but there's an awful lot of stuff out there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, having a, a dashboard or key performance indicators will, will help, will go a long way towards just having an eye on your business and some of the processes within it. Um, you need to be able to determine, you know, your cash flow, your your uh, your feedback from your customers, um, how how your how your processes are performing, both on um, in your business and externally as well. Yeah. So would so you'd say that software is one thing or apps are one thing to make, make life easier, better, faster, but it's another thing for the way. And you've mentioned, a, uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to call you on a little bit of tech talk for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> Use a little bit of plain language and get you to explain it, uh, explain it to us again. And not because you're not doing a fantastic job. I love what you're saying, but this is something where, where a lot of people will start to go kind of know what he's saying, but I kind of don't. And I get the gist of it. What we're really saying is, if I can use it simply or even intuitively, mm -hmm. um, if, it, if it works well, in other words, I can figure it out or it looks appealing, sounds strange to say, it's like, well, if it works, doesn't it matter? Well, no, because if it, if it appears functional and it is, as you said, not stabbing you in the eyeballs, in other words, it's good to look at, good to use, easy to figure out, um, simple to get started with or, or doesn't waste time, then the likelihood of you finding its usefulness or it being applicable to you starts to increase. So usability, user interface, and I mean, this is so um, not well exactly the reason why I brought you on board, because when I get to listen to Ben talk about software, and I guess what I'm railroading him towards in the midst of this conversation, some of the things that he does brilliantly are things like the actual visual side, uh, the user interface, thinking about the end user experience. And there's a lot of brilliant ways to say that, but that's really what it boils down to, is I'm, I wanna know that it is cost effective, that it's going to do what I expect it to do, and that when I plug in, download it, install it, uh, get the dude on the Zoom call <laughs> to help me figure it out, that actually it's gonna do exactly what it's supposed to, but I'm gonna be able to figure it out fairly quickly. Yes, I'm going to need some input or a little bit of time and training, but it should be exhausted. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the reason why, you know, Apple's so successful is, you know, they build stuff that, you know, pretty much just works. You know, yeah. um, it's easy, right? Um, now they do charge an arm and a leg for their stuff and they can get away with it uh, because it is so 
good looking and easy. Um, so, I mean, I think businesses can look at some of the similar concepts there in their own business. Uh, when you provide a high value, easy to use, non-painful uh, way to interact with your business, um, you can increase that, that cost to your client and they'll be, they'll gladly pay for it. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah. So businesses are going to consider going online and if we're going to make it easy, easy to find, easy to use, easy to figure out, uh, cost effective, et cetera. Well, I'm talking to you on a laptop right now. Most of us, well, all of us on this call are connected on the internet but not necessarily everything lives out there and not everything lives here. Mm -hmm. So when businesses consider going online, what should be that consideration when it comes to making that digital move, right? Uh, would that consideration be whether or not it has to do with a marketing, uh, document management, et cetera. What should businesses consider when moving online, quote unquote, moving to the cloud, moving to the ethernet? And how is that, uh, how is application going to really help that? Um, you know, that's, that's a very open-ended question. Uh, I don't know if I have a very clear answer because okay. business is so different. Um, and you can, yeah, you can scale as much or as little as you, as you want to, as you're comfortable with as a business owner. Um, okay. uh, and that's, that's exactly where I, I kind of sit down with those owners and I figure out what, what their capacity is for implementation. Okay. Um, so let's, you know, if I can, let's use data then. Where, where should we consider? Because information is important. You know, mm -hmm. I've, uh, I'm talking to you on a, on a laptop and my laptop has, has served me well for the better part of four years. Mm -hmm. It's only had a couple of oopses. In my case, all of my stuff is stored, you know, online, thanks to Google. Yeah. But, you know, the, the two instances where I've had a technology issue, that's left me with a little bit of whoops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, storage, cloud, cloud storage now is so cheap. Um, I, I recommend everyone use, you know, whether it's um, a, a specific cloud or storage service, uh, like Dropbox even, uh, will do for a lot of businesses. Um, or you could go even more fancy and go to Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud or Azure. Um, lots of different options for cloud storage. And they've come a long way in the last, um, 10 years, uh, both in their redundancy and um, location, being able to uh, upload and download that data very quickly from anywhere in the world. So uh, yeah, totally, I mean, unless, unless you've got a, uh, a, a con internet connection issue locally where uh, access to your data is fundamental um, at all times, uh, I would recommend cloud storage. Uh, if, if you need that data with you, regardless of if there's an outage or not, um, there are network storage devices you can use um, on on-premises that, that will store plenty of data there. Uh, and those also sync, synchronize with the cloud services. So, so you're covered twofold there. Uh, but there's a bit of investment if you want to have that uh, locally as well. Yeah. So let me ask the lead in question, which is obvious, but needs to be asked, even though everybody, everybody's an expert until they get pinched by an email scam. Is it secure? Uh, email? No, your data. Yeah. So you just, you told me to put all my data, all my data online. It's it. Now yeah. it's out there. Now the pirates can come and steal it. Or is that not quite the case? Sure. Um, that's something I would spend a little bit of time on, you know, whatever vendor you're picking for your collect for your storage is, uh, is going to have your own security mechanism. Um, you know, do your, do your research. Um, there's plenty of um, review sites out there. There's Lead2, there's Captera. Um, you can look at what other customers have experienced on those storage platforms. Uh, and they'll give you a good idea of what to expect as well. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, a storage service will not survive if it's not secure. Um, Typically, if it's a well-known brand, you're pretty safe. Okay. So which one do you use? Uh, I use Amazon Web Services, mostly because I'm, I'm very technical that way. Um, and uh, they, 
they have a lot of different offerings that they offer for, uh, say, um, vendors like myself. Yeah. So hard data documentation. A lot of businesses are going digital, but some people still have hard data, hard information, et cetera, a given time where, you know, we're scanning it in, creating it digital and that. Do we keep that still separate and contained someplace else? Do we just keep it digital? Do we keep a little bit of both? What would be your ultimate recommendation? Uh, you're breaking up there a little bit. Um, you're asking what, uh, what storage I would recommend? Yeah, when we're looking at storage for the actual data itself, do we stick it all mm -hmm. out there in the cloud? Do we keep the most important stuff here? Do we do both? What what uh, what does Ben do? Um, you know, on a on a personal level, I, I use uh, Google Photos for for all all our photos that way and videos. Um, but uh, you know, what, for for your business data. Um, you know, you can use, you know, Dropbox. Uh, I've used that for some things. Um, Google um, Storage as well, which comes with your G Suite conveniently. Um, so storing stuff on your Google Drive is perfectly fine, uh, especially if you're sharing that within your organization. Okay. So for me then, I mean, right now the setup I've got in front of me, I have my laptop, I got all my monitors, um, all of my client business-based data, is actually backed up in Google. I'm, I'm, using, I'm using G Suite as well. All my data goes out there. And then I actually have a, a tethered physical drive to my laptop too, backing up. And in my case, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm using, I'm using uh, you know, MacBook, Apple. So Time yep. Machine every day is going through and brrr, taking that entire snapshot of my laptop and moving it away. Is that overkill? Is that the, good, is that the best practice? Um, yeah, no, it's pretty common. Um, you know, for for Apple and Time Machine, um, Apple storage isn't the cheapest, um, but it is very convenient. So uh, if you're using that and you're happy with it, don't change. Okay. Uh, yeah. Last question. Uh, well, that was essentially it, but should people look at protecting that information? And I guess you've just answered that question, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. And also because you know, we write this stuff down too, simply to keep us on track. Should we keep it wholly digital or should we keep it a mix? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of going all the digital. Um, you know, if, if, if you can store it, um, you know, a lot of, in a lot of cases, a lot of things we store, we don't actually need. Um, but if, if we can, get rid of the physical stuff in our lives and make things a bit more feng shui. Um, you know, in our business, um, reduce the, some of that clutter, some of that, uh, those things that are business that, you know, might cause us some anxiety and uh, I'm a fan of going digital. Ben? actually for the for those that joined us today helpful thoughtful questions there can be a lot of information and i mean you know i've, I've sent a couple of links to you guys in here now some of the info that ben and i have talked about today some things like captera for example it, one of the best uh you know software comparison sites on the planet you'd be surprised at the kind of things you can you can look at to see which feature beats beats out which better but it pays to at least listen to somebody, pay to a voice to start with. So here's the time. Questions or comments, thoughts, ideas, clarification on something. Hey, I my business does this and I'm thinking about doing this or that. What should I what should I be doing? What should my consideration be? I, I'm in I'm in HR, I'm in accounting, I'm in business, I, I'm in business development sales, you know, uh, CRMs. What is a CRM? There's always a million questions, and we all seem to think that. Either we're, we're, far, we're far smarter or else it, it, we seem really silly because asking that question sounds like it'd be dumb. But if we never have a chance to learn it from anywhere, then it's no help to us. So questions or comments? Good to go. So Ben, you talked about um, onboarding. Are there specific apps that you recommend for onboarding processes? 
Um, that's really more for high-end custom apps, um, where there's a lot of different processes involved in getting users or clients into your system. Um, so that can be uh, these social media signups, you know, log in with Facebook or Google, that kind of thing. Um, and that just provides more security for the end user as far as, 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 far as what um, data they want to give up. So they're not entering any password, they're logging in with uh, uh, an established authentication method there. Um, but as far as onboarding goes, you know, having systems where, where you might have a, uh, a welcome email, um, something that's going to help them uh, have a good expectation of what they can expect in your service or, or offering. Um, uh, yeah, just more touch points, which will give them uh, more benefit to, to using you. So you can use uh, like something like even Mailchimp. Um, you know, have it uh, send out a welcome email. You know, when someone signs up uh, for your newsletter, or even if uh, they sign up as a user and on your website, um, with some information that will be helpful to them, um, make them feel valued. Right, that onboarding experience. You want to make sure that that your customer is taken care of right from the get go. So Ben, I'm going to go through some major categories, call it, call it common or the most universal or the most stock kind of idea stuff that we're going to need. And just, just one word, which product would be your preference? So when I say, when I say, uh, you know, uh, SMM, social media management software, you're probably going to say Cabana. At least I would hope so since you've built the software, but you might have a different opinion. So let's start there. SMM, what would you, what would you recommend? Yeah, Cabana. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, now, free for analytics. In other words, analytics is where we get the math so that we can see what's going on with people. What would be free for analytics? Uh, free for analytics? Yeah. Um, we've got ClickStory, which has a free offering. Okay. Uh, that's going to be going away soon, perhaps. We'll see. Um, but uh, yeah, if you've got a chance to check it out, sign up for the free option where you can. Okay. And obviously, if we're going to go, what, what, what should you pay for when it comes to analytics? In other words, measuring what's going on, let's say when it comes to your website and stuff like that, obviously, we would say, again, click story. Yeah, click story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, accounting and bookkeeping software. Uh, you know, I, I listened to Danielle, um, and she seems to, to point everyone towards QuickBooks. I'm not an accountant expert. Um, so I'm going to leave it up to the expert um, that I know, uh, and she she recommends QuickBooks. Okay. Uh, yeah, email email document and just your general streamlining as well. You've mentioned both Google and Microsoft Office 365. I'm telling you, you got to pick just one. What would you use? Uh, definitely Google's G Suite. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of benefits there. Uh, you've got a huge segment of your your younger population also coming through the system that have used G Suite through their schools, uh, whether it's the universities or public education, um, especially here in uh, Alberta. Um, that's that's what they're using. So that's what they're familiar with. That's what that's what your your young people that you're going to be hiring in your business are are going to be experienced with. Yeah. So let's see, we've got email, we've got accounting, we've got social media management, actual marketing, getting stuff done and created. What would you recommend? Mm -hmm. um, good, good question. Um, Canva is super easy to use. Um, but yeah, you know what? This might be a better question for you, Mitch, actually. Um, what, what, what would you use? Uh, Actually, you hit it right on the head. I, I lo love Canva, and I've been an advocate of them for a very long time. Once again, it's got a free option and a paid-for option. The free option gives you tens of thousands of opportunities to make something really cool. Uh, you can make presentations. Uh, again, you know, under software here, we've got things like uh, marketing, social media, et cetera. And so for social media, you've got LinkedIn and Facebook, you know, kind of the places you go for business. Well, 
Canva allows you to build pretty much everything for any of those. You want to create just a Facebook post. Canva's got a format, a template that's exactly the right size. You know, you, you go on LinkedIn and you see the profile pictures and you see the big banner pictures at the top. Canva's got a, a format and the exact scale to build, build those headers on, on, on LinkedIn profiles or, you know, uh, image sizes for all these things. You can build presentations, uh, uh, slide decks. You can you can do do short videos. You can build build gifs or gifs depending on how one pronounces that. You can build all the all the different content you need. You can build books and and notices and, and uh, seven, uh, exactly. So yeah, I would I would recommend there because you can start for free. So that's always a, a great resource to go with. If you're going to, yeah, we're going to leverage down one more uh, advertising. Let's go with let's go with advertising social media. Where are you going to go? And where are you going to start with your business mm -hmm. or where should businesses start with their business if they're going to stretch into the wide world of social media? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would suggest, you know, check out some of um, rapid boost marketing's um, sessions on uh, advertising as well. They've got some really good content there. Um, LinkedIn, particularly, you know, if you're, if you're aiming for B2B, um, if you're looking for business to consumer, you know, Facebook is probably a fantastic option there as well. Yeah. Last one, which, which is always near and dear to my heart, calendar. How do people keep themselves organized? What, do you, what, what would you recommend so people are keeping better track of what they're doing? Mm -hmm. uh, being a G Suite, I use Google Calendar, obviously. Um, but, uh, you know, Apple's got their calendar. Uh, Microsoft's got their calendar system. You know, you just use the calendar system which you've integrated with your your business platform. What what, what you're aligned with. If you're if you're running on Microsoft products, use Microsoft. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, thanks for tuning in. Technology, both both daunting, uh, insightful, uh, frightening, comforting, uh, fun, serious technology applications. There are millions of options available. And again, one of the resources we mentioned today, Captera, you, all you have to do is spend 10 minutes. Uh, I'm looking for software that allows me to do estimating and electrical contracting uh, only for industrial production. Uh, why? That's a, literally a thing that I've typed into that search string in the last 90 days. And funny enough, you'll find dozens of opportunities to, for somebody who has made exactly that and how well they compare to each other from price and usability, et cetera. So take a time and opportunity, decide what it is that you need for your business. More importantly, look for those areas where you always have challenges, uh, where you get squeezed, you get constrained. Find the resources, the tools, the apps that are gonna help, first of all, take your business online, that are gonna speed up or make more efficient your business, your operations, that are gonna make you, if you're your only employee or your employees better at their jobs, and more importantly, are going to be really, really simple to use, really easy. Can you use them? Can you put them to work very quickly? And are they going to do what they say they're going to do? And can you understand them? If, if that is kind of your criteria going in, chances are you're going to be successful. A guy like Ben gets paid to build beautiful, elegant, complex things, but he also gets paid to do it so that you end up wanting to use it at the end. So Ben, thank you for sharing your, your information and expertise on here. For our audience that joined us today, thank you for coming coming in with us as well. For those that get to see it over the coming days and weeks, do not hesitate to re reach out to Ben through his companies, Avenue IO, ClickStory.app, uh, Ironbrook, Cloud Owl, et cetera, et cetera. He has a, a wealth of knowledge to share with you and he's happy to have a conversation with anybody. We look forward to seeing you in the future and have a fantastic day. Everybody go safely in the world and we'll see you soon. Thanks everyone.